Hello one for the second build of the league. So I sold the golden build off, like I said in the last video, and I pretty much went back and forth on builds to play. So I ended up changing my mind. I'm gonna do the mapper after this video or after this build is pretty much, I'm happy with this build because the skill trees on the mapper and this build are pretty close, not that many uh, regrets needed. So I'm gonna pretty much, that's why I did this build first. And this build should be able to throw out currency because it's really cheap. But pretty much the build I went with is one that I played twice already. And this is a different version of it. So that's why I wanted to try it again. Which is the Hex Blast Ignite build with uh, Black Flame. This build I do like a lot. It's very strong, tanky. This version is not as strong though as the, um, the Spectre and Shield if I'm correct on the two. Or Wand and Shield, Spectre and Shield, something like that. The, two, uh, the shield version. Shield version is extremely strong. The problem with the shield version, it needs Agasawara. And Agasawara is like 12 divines, give or take, right now. So it's not really worth going that route. So I went more of the cheaper route. And this is more like a ISP version. It's also League Start friendly, which just gives me an idea for next League too. So I might League Start this build. But ignore some of the uh, items on here. Like the Ashes, this was actually pretty lucky. I was not planning on having an Ashes on this build at all. The original version I made this build um, had the, shoot, what, what the item the item is called? It's the one that drops from Shaper and Elder. The ones that make it the, um, I think Shaper, it gives you uh, Temp Chains. Uh, if it's cast as an aura for free. And I think the Elder one is the Discipline. Despair. So there's also a Despair uh, Chaos one. They're pretty much the same necklaces. It's just one drops from either boss. And then the, the, the one that gives you like Despair is Elders. But you can run either one. They are a lot cheaper than Ashes. Ashes is like the super late game version. But my original uh, plan when I was, built, when I was uh, making the build was to use one of those two necklaces. Put one of those in the Blast Me um, support setup and just run like that. That was my original plan with the build, but I got lucky drop while leveling this character, which let me buy the ashes. So I just went with the ashes just to have it. Since the price of ashes is pretty cheap right now, so I said why not just pick it up. Because it seemed like it was supposed to be a lot cheaper than what it should be. But like it runs like um a six socket Martia. I don't know, whatever you call a staff. I've never used a staff before. It's pretty much a lot of people were using this one before they go with uh, the Kane of Colomac. Because Kane of Colomac is like the best in slot, but to get the correct Kane on um, Colomac is very, very expensive. Or like the plus three support, fire dot, fire damage. It's pretty much one you're looking like, not like a, almost a couple weeks into the league before it come even up for sale. But pretty much the staff gives you a nice amount of block, gives you battle mage, gives you a, a lot of damage, I think. Yeah, it gives you like 600. This one gives you... So it gives you between 573 and 651 uh, um, DPS. Because the Battle Mage, it combines Fizz and um, Elemental together. So it's pretty nice overall. You know, a big chunk of block, which is nice. So it's not bad overall. And then in the staff, I just have uh, Cast Damage Taken, Molten Shell. And then... The four link I have here, you can put this anywhere to be honest. I just threw it here because this is the way the colors rolled on uh, socket wise. But it's pretty much just multi totem, wither, spell totem. If you have a four socket, you can add faster casting. You don't need the faster casting at all. If you only have a three link, just go with that instead and put this as a faster casting if you can get it. Um, helm. So you don't need this helmet. I just personally like this helmet, mainly just for having hexproof or take no extra damage from crit strikes, just as an extra defense layer. You don't need this at all. I think this one's better if you're not doing Black Flame. If you're just doing this the Templar version with Battle Mage, with the um the one I played back in Ritual that had like a crazy amount of block defense with uh, skin of lords and stuff like that. Like that version doesn't need Black Flame because you're a pure fire. But the Witch version, Black Flame's a little bit better. So this is just a personal thing. You don't need this. Run a regular helmet if you want. If you run a regular helmet, it'll make your um, getting your attributes and resistance a whole lot easier. Because with this helmet, you struggle on getting res and stats pretty well. 
but this is just a personal preference of mine. And in here, I just have Divergent Malevolence just for the um, damage over time, super cheap. You know, I have an Enlighten here. You don't need the Enlighten. Like, even without the Enlighten, you still have 39 mana. It's not enough to cast your Hex Blast, though, so you're going to have to drop an Aura. Most likely, if you're going to drop an Aura, you're probably going to drop Defiance Banner. Or just play it based on what you think. But um, Defiance Banner and a Determination. Just for more armor, because defense is what this build's all about, pretty much. You know, Ashes, if you can afford it. If you can't, go with one of the other two I said. If you don't, before you get one of those two, just use a regular uh, necklace, plus one if you can. Like, plus one Chaos, plus one Spell, or I think this Spell one, maybe? I don't remember anymore. Plus one Intelligence, stuff like that. Ashes, I just like this one, because it makes your, um, with Charisma, just to give you more mana reservation. And buff all the quality of alternate quality gems. Like giving plus 23 to this one. Uh, like all your alternate ones are the main ones that are going to benefit the most from it. Anything that's not alternate is going to be like maybe benefit a little bit. But it's not going to be like you're not going to notice the most. Like I should probably end up switching my despair and temp chains to um. Uh, what do you want to call it? To alternate quality. I just wasn't planning to have my ashes. So that's why they're not really there. Uh, Black Flame, it's pretty much the same as the last one. You're converting all your um, Ignite to Chaos. So enemies ignited by you, um, you take Chaos damage instead of Fire. It's just Chaos damage is nice. It makes a lot of the fights a lot easier. You don't have to worry about the Energy Shield. Uh, six Link, I don't know what the best Six Link is for this build. I originally was going to do Skin of Lore like I did last time. But that costs like almost three Divines for the colors on it. So I said screw that. And I just went with a random 6 link. This one wasn't bad on the mark. I bought this for like 1 divine. You know, 6 linked already. Had 108 life on it. Uh, double T1 res. With the crafted life percentage on there. It's pretty good for 1 divine. I just got to roll the... Um, the um, XR and Eater stuff to make him actually better for the build. I don't know exactly which ones I want to go with yet. I got to look into it more. But it's not bad for at least a starting uh, spot. It's pretty much Divergent Hex Blast... Uh, unbound, pretty much the same setup everyone uses. Burning damage, swift affliction, ignite proliferation, and deadly elements. Eventually, you know, go for like awakens of these gems. Go for like a 2120 ignite proliferation when you get the currency, which I'll probably go for later. Uh, a random blue ring. This is not the ring I plan to use. I'm going to use the, um, the percent life ring. I forget what it's called. Like get that with get like a T1 life roll on it. And then uh, I'm going to craft Fire Res on it, just because I don't have any Fire Res on this build. I'm um, short Fire Res, so that's why I'm going to use the um, that ring to place this. But that ring's level 80, so I need 9 more levels. So this is just a placeholder to have something. Um, I never used these gloves before, but I saw a lot of people using these as a League Start version. Because they are very cheap, and they're very easy to get. So Vixen gloves are really nice with this build, if you want to go budget. Because it gives you... Um, Pretty much the biggest reason people use this is for the, um, you can apply additional curse. So it lets you have three curses with the build instead of having to take like um, a hunter chest for curse or take a whispers of doom side, like all that kind of stuff. Like if you don't want to use this, you can always use the um, intuitive, or no, the jewel that drops from Maven lets you jump stuff, you know, get the CI one, take whispers of doom that way too is an option. But this is just a super cheap version like one, yeah, well, yeah, like two chaos, you know, it works. Pretty much it also triggers socketed curse spells when you use a, uh, another curse. So what's nice thing about the gloves is like you have your normal one curse, your uh, gloves give you curse number two, and your um, ascendancy gives you curse number three. So you get three curses that way. So pretty much like whatever curse is on your um, blast me support, that's your first curse. And then whatever curse you're casting to um, start your big doom uh, blast, that will trigger the curse on the glove to also be, to apply more damage. So, and um, mainly this gives you more uh, minus on them, like minus 28 chaos res, so you can just hit them really hard. But the gloves, it's pretty much throw in whatever you want in the gloves and the boots. They're pretty much like mine, I just do whatever slot popped up. 
Like, I have a Despair here. Like, I have, actually have one Curse. I have a Flame Dash here. You can run Flame Dash with Second Wind if you want. It's just optional to you. I have a Portal and Cast on Death Portal set up, just in case. Just because I have two open slots, nothing to do with it. And then on the um, the boots, they're pretty much just life, um, life movement speed, resistance, and dex because I was really dex starved. I bought the wrong base, so I had to recall them the funny way. Uh, but pretty much the boots, it's increased area effect, blast me with your temp chains, and then just the punishment you're casting to trigger the other curse. You can flip them, doesn't make a difference which order your curses are in. Just do it based on your colors, your amulet, all that kind of stuff. And then I just have a Stygian Vice here with just life resistance. And then this little jewel here is pretty much just uh, more strength, more dex, and life. That's pretty much what it is. Flasks are garbage. Pretty much like the Enduring uh, Mana Flask, one I recommend. You know, get like a, a Granite Flask, get a Quicksilver, some life. I'll probably end up making all these the um, gain charges when you block because you're max block with this build. So that's probably the best way I want to go with them. And just let them uh, refill. Get, maybe get roomies in here too to help with the spell block because spell block's the hardest with, with this build. Um, trying to think what else. I think that's the main part. I've done this build a bunch of times. So you want to see like other videos of it, look at my POB or look at my uh, past videos. But pretty much the build is, you know, you have your temp chains on your aura, run around. It's probably easier to show on a map. How the build works. So like when you're running around, uh, you can see here, when they get closer, they get the curse on them already. That's the temp chains curse that's from the aura. So the way hex blast works without that aura on them, you can't cast hex blast. So when, when the aura is on it cast hex blast, it just one shots everything. When, if you get like a boss, the boss is the only reason you're using your punishment. I uh, use my punishment. If there's no boss, you don't need to use punishment. Like if I can use punishment, the circle will go off and that means it's active and then it does even more damage. And the profane bloom to start making everything pop. And then the withered flame here so it'll take more damage they hit it. But like, that's how you can tell it works when you cast it. That's the doom activating. And then when it does like the um, the big pop there, that's when you know like you hit the doom, and then it's dead. Another thing with this build is you want to make sure you have hundred percent chance to ignite or at least ninety five plus, because your ignite is what does all your damage. It's a dot multi build, so you're doing damage over time. It's not a hit them once and that's your big damage. You hit them, apply your biggest ignite, and let the the bars just go down. Uh, it's tree. It's pretty generic. Um, I only done three laps so far. If you do not have the Vixen gloves as a start, I would not recommend taking Profane Bloom first. I did this only because I had the Vixen gloves and I was close to using them anyway when I completed my first lab. But I would recommend taking Malediction first. The additional curse is what you need to make the build feel playable at level 31 when you get the Blast of Me. So without level, without, um, you know, Malediction I would recommend taking first, then go your Void Beacon, your Withering Presence, and then your Propane uh, Bloom. Because you don't really need the Propane Bloom early on at all. I just took it as a more fun thing to take, but this would have been much better overall to take first. These two are like your two and three always, because you don't need your Chaos Res until later anyway, and you don't get Black Flame until much later. If you're a Leak Start, Black Flame is usually three to four Divines anyway, so that's why you probably want to go one, two, three, and four. But skill tree is pretty generic. Going up this way, get your life mana wheel. Up here, um, yeah. You know, elemental overload for more damage, your damage over time, dex if you need it. Cluster jewel setup when you get that going, which will be like the next part of it. That's like probably the next video will be the cluster jewel. I don't know exactly which way I'm going with cluster jewel yet. Use the cluster jewel, I probably recommend to make sure you get your 100% um, chance to ignite. Cause there's nodes you can get for fire that give you 10% uh, ignite chance. Uh, your wither set up, um, increase effect of wither. Your fire cluster give you a uh, 30% chance to ignite. If you don't need the ignite chance, just take the uh, fire.multi instead. But you most likely apply need the 30%. 
And then here, I just took recover 2% of life when you ignite a non-ignited enemy. You know, life. Um, this is, you need Doomsday if you're playing this build. When you switch to Hex Blast, make sure you take Doomsday. That's the thing on the ground that makes the big pop and lets you just one-shot everything. Uh, Intuitive Leap, this is expensive. This is probably the, one of the more expensive items on the build. When I bought it, it was like two Divines. But it just saves you skill points. If you can't afford Intuitive Leap, just scale down this way and take the Skittering Runes yourself with three or two extra points. Because you want this because it gives you 10 more Doom, which is more damage. And like over here, I just have some more Mana Regeneration. Um... This is pretty much just block. If you have a staff, take this. If you're not, if you're using a sword and shield or a, a shield, you don't need to take this point. Right here, it's just more block. Like even more mana if you want to take this route. Some more block down here if you need to. Which I gotta see which way I want to go for sure. Uh, this way, you know, another fire uh, cluster. It like same thing. If you need the ignite chance, take the ignite. If you don't need it, take your fire dot multi. And for me, I just took a 20% uh, fire dot multi. Uh, mana reservation, which you do need. And here I have an auras, um, gain 10% increase effect. Take it if you want. Life wheel, uh, vitality, which I actually can get rid of this one. Because I was using vitality before. But I since I dropped vitality, I might put vitality back on the build. The problem is, I don't know where I'm going to put it. So if I can put vitality back on the build, I will. That shouldn't be taken. But pretty much like that's a good spot for vitality if you need. If you want 10% life with life. So I'm not sure exactly which route I'm taking. And then uh, this is just another block wheel for more block chance. I might take the spell block also though. Because you'll notice with this build, spell block is your problem. So like with glancing blow, I'm at 132 attack block and 72 spell block. So I can easily probably take these points right here, or take at least one of them to get max spell. Most of spell too though. But if I want more spell, I have this chance too. This is a block wheel. If you want fire wheel up there. Down here, I have a watcher's eye in here. I have just so damage elements you inflict faster with malevolence is the cheaper um malevolent watcher's eye. If you want the better one, it's the damage over time while affected by malevolence. But that starting price is like usually four plus a uh, divine so it's a lot more expensive this one's under one divine uh another um 50 more damage another 15 percent chance to ignite i took 15 all res here if i need it i'll keep it which you can tell i'm barely over capped right now so that's why i can't took it uh this is just more block down here you don't need the crit size so just take the block if you want the block half uh, more, what do I call it? More life. This is pretty much your whole block section. You know, you have block up here, glancing blow if you need it. Ideally, you don't want to take it, but I took it just because my spell block is so bad. Uh, another life and reduced mana cost of skills over here because your hex blast is really expensive. It costs 64 mana even with these nodes. So it's a very uh, mana intense. That's why you do need an enduring uh, divine flask. Another uh, dex if you need it. A, um, and then right now I'm just going for the de uh, determination mana reservation just to free up some more mana. And then if you need, like, there's a um, there's another jewel slot there. There's another fire dot multi cluster here, which is worth taking. And that's pretty much the base of the tree. What I plan to do now, I'm most likely going to do, is I'll probably finish up, get here, determination. I might go here to get these real fast. I could even spec up this way. For another 10% chance to ignite, which is not bad to have. And a nice resistant node, because with this resistant node, I can probably drop this point here and take away that 15 all res, because this pretty much does it for me. You know, if I do that, drop that point, go this way, get the, the nice life chunk here for the 20% life down here, got some nice armor, some nice strength you need, regen life. I'll go to I'll be a cluster there. Cluster jewel setup. Like it depends. I gotta see where the build's gonna go. I've never played the staff version before. This is brand new to me in the Vixen Gloves. I always play this with Agasawara taking um what you wanna call it? The um 
the Timeless Jewel here to convert this to uh, Divine Flesh. So you get uh, like a hybrid ES life uh, build, which is really nice playstyle. It's just super, super expensive if you're going to go that route compared to this one. This is more just like the budget version. But you can see that mapping is super easy with the build. I guess we can show this too, actually. You know, even though I don't have that much life in ES, you do have a lot of defense on the build, so it does help make up for it a little bit. Like, the only um, the only map mods you want to avoid is monsters take, like, percent less um, avoid elements. That's the one you do not want to run. You can run it. It's going to make your life uh, not fun at all. And because you're playing a witch, you have the... Um, uh, well, once you get Profane Bloom, you have the ability to uh, not worry about um, hacks or curses anymore, so that's a nice option. And that's it. Yeah. The nice thing, this build works really well for... Um, you can see, like, once you start going, you know, you put Wither down if you want. Just run around and hit everything. And everything usually dies pretty quick. But yeah, like if you play the Templar version, your biggest problem with that build is going to be um, what you call it, a, um, hex or hexproof. That's the reason why the Templar version struggles a little bit more. Is you get you get a lot more damage out of the, the um the Templar version. It's just the hexproof sucks because you have no way around it compared to this one. But you can see it very easy. I didn't have to really use the uh, punishment combo at all. Everything but just die right away. But the build's not the fastest build out there. It's a fun build to play. It's very different. A lot of people don't really care for it. Not people play it. That's why the build's on the cheaper side. But you can play the build many different ways. There's Templars. You can play it. Templar has Battle Mage, so it's really nice. Uh, the witch has um, more curses, has um, get around hexproof enemies, which is probably the biggest thing. It is personal preference. I just want to try something different else I have an idea for next league, because it's the third different way I'm playing the build. I did the Templar first, then I did the witch black flame version with the sort of the same setup as Templar, with defense wise. Worked very well. And then this is the t now I'm just trying with the uh, staff version instead. Try something a little different. See how it works out. Um, I don't know. Sure. So I've ran a single tap. So I barely see running any tablets this league so far. But yeah, this is a um level seventy three. So like two levels higher, and it works. Obviously, the building's improvements. You know, not even having the 3k life does not feel that good. That's why I want to get that like 20% life cluster and all that kind of stuff. Uh, oh yeah, bandits kill all. Um, Peel bean description below. But yeah, like on the boss here, I'm going to put up my. There he is. So I'm gonna put my totems up. I'm gonna go like this, so it gets the wither, and then I'm gonna hit him once. It missed. That's why you want 100% chance to ignite. Because now he goes, and he's dead. But yeah, like, I'm gonna get work on getting the uh, levels, get the cluster jewels, get awakening gems, because they are cheap for this build. I checked the cluster jewels, the most expensive one. If you're not going with the AoE one, it's like one one to mine. That's the most expensive one. AoE is like two, so you skip it. You don't need it. Most important ones is just your main damage setup. But yeah, that's the whole map. Very easy. Build's not gonna be your fastest one, but it works. If you want to put a headhunter on this build, you can put a headhunter. Or put a mage blood on the build, throw a mage blood on the build. It's very um open. Just play how you how you want to. And say you don't need the gloves at all. They are not needed. You can easily run the build the way I have in the past. And I've ran it with just the um, 
Plasmid Chen Chames combo, and then using the um, and just casting it like a despair. Like that combo works very well if you don't want to use these. You want to use like a regular pair of gloves instead. If you want to use as um, gentle touch instead, you can. Like there's a lot of options with the gloves. You don't need to use these. These is a very budget version and a doable early start to go with. If you want to apply more curses, that's all it comes down to really. If you don't care, don't run it. And then it gives you an extra slot for resistance, which means if you're going to go Headhunter, if you are going to play Headhunter or Mage Blood, well, Mage Blood can get away with the flash setup, with setup, but if you're doing a Headhunter version, I would not use these gloves. You know, put Headhunter here, get rare gloves, get resistance, life, stats, whatever you need, and then just fix your build like that and drop these. You won't have any time anyway to cast them with Headhunter, but it's an option. Like the ring needs to be replaced. I want to replace all the um, the gems all leveling right now. But overall, the build's working. I need to get like a lamb enchant something. But we're gonna see where the build goes. I'm gonna just right now. I'm just gonna try to level up a bunch of determinations, bow them, try to get another twenty one, and we'll see where it goes from there. But I believe I covered everything. This is just the beginning version of the build. Now I wasn't planning on showing uh, the ashes, but and we sort of got lucky today, so I wanted to throw it in there. But you don't never should never you don't need it. If you don't have the ashes, you can and might want the other two instead. You save all the mana from you save all the blasphemy uh mana reservation, so it does clear up. Um you clear up 28% mana if you have one of those necklaces on instead. So it does work out that way. And there's also if you need to. You're not gonna if you don't have the necklace, you can also spec this way and take the 30% mana reservation efficiency for curses if you need to go that route too. That's another option you could play with. I'm trying to think. Anything else I miss? I mean, these are all the same. You know, I always do Brian Keen and Aberrant just for burning ground because of X Art. And I like just like uh get cannot be frozen. I think that's it. If you want to check your night chance, just cover over hex blasts. Chance to ignite, I'm only eighty percent right now. Like I know, I can either go double cluster, well use two mediums to get fix it, or just take that one node we saw earlier, which most likely I will to get to ninety, and then just do one medium cluster to get to hundred, which is probably the easiest way of doing it, which I probably will. Um, but yeah, the a POB a link in the description below isn't calculated correctly with damage wise because it doesn't have like the uh 40 or 50 doom in there it doesn't have the withering stacks in there i'll leave all that out i'll put that in the next video when we talk about the more higher budget version when we start going for like you know the uh, shaper guardian shaper all that kind of stuff but that might be like two days away from now i gotta push levels on this build on today's stream and then we'll see where it goes from there depends on how much time i have to play because i got stuff i gotta do anyway later in the day and then i want to push this life pull up because i mean 2.8 is pretty bad when i add like the the life wheel the ring that should hopefully jump up above three but ideally i want to get to like 4k life and like 15 2k es but i might need to switch out the staff version but we'll see but hope i like the video it went out a lot longer than i expected it to but hex blasts if you don't know how the build works you're not going to understand why when you right click it does nothing like how it is right now. I'm just right clicking, nothing will work. Without a curse, hex blast doesn't work. Which is one of the more trickier parts. You can still hit something that's um immune to curse. You can still hit hex blast them, but you're not gonna do a lot of damage. Most of your damage comes from your ignite chance. But thank you, hope everyone liked the video. If you like what you see, subscribe below, follow on Twitch, and hope everyone had a good one. And if you have any questions, please put in the description below. I'll try to answer best I can. I do like playing this build a lot. It's a lot of fun. And I'm going to use this build to farm up currency for my mapper build, which is the map we're going to pretty much invest heavy into. Because I know what the build's going to be. I just got to see how much it's going to cost. Because it has some big ticket items on there. And I'm not sure if the Ashes is going to be part of it or not. It's definitely optional. But I might go something else instead. But we'll see. But hope you have one on the next one. Hope everyone has a good one.